Hey everyone, it's a quiet morning here at Untamed Strength. The barbells are nestled, the iron plates are resting, and the chalk is settled. And today, we're talking about back tweaks, featuring Dr. Austin Baraki. Yeah! Pain is his middle name, and back tweaks are his game. Now you might remember the video I made a little while back about my own personal experience with tweaking my back while training with Austin, and what we did to work through it. From an empty barbell to 495 in one weekend. Well today, we're talking about the science of back tweaks. Why back tweaks hurt and what to do about them. The script for this video is coming straight from an article that Austin wrote for the Barbell Medicine newsletter. You can sign up for that newsletter on the barbellmedicine.com website. So here we go. Why back tweaks hurt and what to do about them by Austin Baraki. A few weeks ago, I had a lifter send me the following message. If everything is okay, why did I get a sharp pain in my lower back two inches off the ground with warm-up deadlift weights yesterday? Pain was so bad initially, I couldn't put the plates away, bend over, or even walk much. Dang. This is a very common thought process and can be a pretty difficult one to put to rest because of the typical understanding and cultural ideas about pain. If I'm okay, why do I hurt? I wouldn't hurt if I'm okay. This idea is not true. And once you learn a whole lot more about pain and how it works, you'll understand why. One critical concept you have to straighten out in your mind is the difference between nociception and pain. Nociception is a neural encoding and processing of a noxious stimulus, whereas pain is formally defined as an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with actual or potential tissue damage or described in terms of such damage. When you have something locally irritating the tissues mechanically, thermally, chemically, etc., the nociceptors become sensitized and activated. Their signals get sent to the spinal cord and brain, where they are processed in areas related to attention, memory, cognition, and emotion, among many others. To oversimplify, the brain has to figure out where the stimulus falls on a spectrum of benign to threatening and dangerous. If these complex interacting processes lead to an ultimate conclusion of benign, it won't be an issue. If they lead to a conclusion of danger, the brain produces pain, which you then feel in that part of the body, a protective mechanism. So this is the critical concept. You can see how one might experience nociception without pain, or even pain without nociception. Think about it, where does phantom limb pain come from? This is where the whole if I'm okay, why do I hurt? And I wouldn't hurt if I'm okay, ideas fall flat. By whatever mechanism, you experienced a back tweak. Local nociceptors got activated and send their message to your spinal cord and brain. Your brain came to the ultimate determination that something threatening or dangerous just happened and you experience acute pain in your back. Your brain and spinal cord want you to protect the area. This is the same thing that happens when you experience a burn, a cut, or get punched in the gut. You, being terrified of something bad having happened, feel anxious about the pain. You continuously focus on the nasty pain and notice how walking is a chore and how it kept you up all night. Perhaps you feel upset and frustrated because you know you now have to take time off of training, something you presumably enjoy. You might go to the doctor, an authority figure who probably tells you all sorts of scary things and prescribes you muscle relaxers, etc. All of these contextual features influence your brain's assessment of the situation, which then has influence on your symptoms. The evidence is absolutely clear that people who have the worst attitudes towards pain, who always assume the worst, catastrophizing, and who demonstrate the most fear of movement due to pain, kinesiophobia, tend to have the worst long-term outcomes for pain. So we need to desensitize the system, so to speak, using movement, and deliberate cognitive strategies to address fear, catastrophizing, and kinesiophobia. So that's it guys, hopefully you found that helpful. I know I did when I first read it, my mind was blown. So if you want, go sign up for the Barbell Medicine newsletter on the barbellmedicine.com website. Until next time, always remember, Tread on time. Yeah.